Hey, what's up everyone? Hope you're all doing well, staying safe in the quarantine. First, just wanted to come online and give a big thank you to everyone that watched and commented on the video I made before this. It means a lot to me. I know I still have a lot of loyal subscribers that still watch my content even after all this time. And I was thinking about it. If you guys are loyal to my channel, I still have to stay loyal to all you guys. And what that means is still making this channel helpful and creating good content. So that's what I wanna to do today. All right, so again, thank you very much. We're gonna talk about something that I feel is very important, especially at a time like this, and that's gonna be code reviews, all right? I'm gonna give it a little bit of a longer introduction than normal, but it deserves it. First, let's talk about who is this video for code reviews. If you're a software developer, if you're actively programming, this video is going to be relevant for you. If you don't do any of these things, if you're not coding and you're not trying to get better at it, then this video might be a little useless. You can stick around if you want to listen to my voice or watch my face for the next 10, 15 minutes, whatever you want. What is this going to be? So I've compiled a checklist, a code review checklist, which is pretty much everything you should watch out for when reviewing someone else's code. I've put 12 items on there, and this is also going to be very useful for writing your own code. But the guts of this video is going to, we're going to go through this checklist pretty fast. Third, I think it's important to know why something's important. Don't do stuff blindly. You should know that something's important and don't just waste your time. But from my opinion, I do think code reviews are especially important, especially when you're working remotely and apart from your coworkers. Reviewing other people's work is a communication process and doing a code review well really says a lot to how good you are as a software engineer. So I do think it's really important. Secondly, this is obvious, but to be good at the craft, you have to know how to review the craft. If you're a plumber, I expect you to know if the toilet is installed properly. If you're a programmer, I don't really expect you to know anything about toilets. Code reviews help you stay technical, I always say this, stay technical for as long as possible. My promise to everybody watching this video is that by the end of the video, your code review skills will be upgraded. What to do after this video? So I'm upping my social media game. I'm asking for all your help. But first, I'm gonna go over a blog post in this video. I want you to bookmark the blog post, pretty much bookmark my website and use the checklist as a future reference for all your code reviews. Please sign up for my newsletter. And I never thought I would say this, but please also follow me on Instagram. All the links are gonna be in the description, all right? So we're gonna go through a really, really high level overview. Everybody should explore each topic further, but I'm gonna go through these really high level. But anyway, this is a breadth first traversal kind of thing and you need to go deep. So let's get started. So what we're gonna do in this video is pretty much just go over my blog post. We're not gonna go through all these points. You can read them separately. What I want you to do is just look at the numbered items and follow my voice, all right? We're gonna talk about everything at a very high level, but this video is just gonna to be to broaden, just broaden your horizon and add to your framework of code reviews. You probably have your own patterns. I'm just adding to it, all right? And just kind of expand the thinking a little bit. First. First thing to do when you review code, you just gotta make sure the code works and don't assume it just works out of the box, right? You have to take your time and actually understand the implementation. If you can't even understand what the author is trying to do, there's no way you can do a good code review. So this might take some time too, especially if you're re reviewing code that other people are experts at, but at a fundamental level, you have to understand what's going on. Second, Second and third point are gonna be abuses of software development, pretty much. First is gonna be any abuse of memory. For all the old school programmers, you probably know what I'm talking about. Did you free everything you knew? Did you like properly release all the memory? All the modern tools, you don't really have to worry about this, but for all the modern programmers that never have to do heap management, just make sure you're not doing anything too crazy and too dangerous with uh, any kind of operation. One thing that's very common is people do unbounded database reads. They could read just like 
hundreds of megabytes, maybe gigs even, into memory from the database accidentally. So just be careful about how much memory you're using. Also, with performance, it's very, very often the case where like one line, one line of code could just make the performance of a good web application turn into like a shitty web application. So you always have to make sure don't disturb the performance of the application. Are you adding extra IO calls? Are you adding extra database reads? Are you doing crazy amounts of logging? Anything that affects the performance of an application has to be reviewed deeply. Fourth and fifth point are going to be concurrency issues. Slightly more advanced topic, but fundamentally, it's not that crazy. You just have to really simplify it. There's always going to be concurrency issues. What exactly is concurrency? Well, concurrency is kind of like you're cooking in your kitchen and everything is simple, but then you invite three of your friends to cook in the same kitchen as you, and then things start getting really complicated because everybody's trying to get to the fridge at the same time. So that's my analogy. But anyway, concurrency issues, four and five, there could be local concurrency issues that you have to pay close attention to. This is what I'm talking about in the same process space. Do you have a multi-threaded application in the same process space doing unthread safe things? You gotta be very careful about that. The second, type the second family of concurrency issues are distributed concurrency issues so again the core one major point you have to take extra care of it is that concurrency can cause problems when multiple threads of execution use a shared resource and this is all over the place in a distributed application just even the most basic application you're going to share a database you're going to share a cache all these shared resources have to be utilized properly in the distributed setting with lots of computers too. So again, concurrency issues, they sound advanced, but it's really not that advanced. You just have to make sure local concurrency, is it accommodated for, is everything threat safe? Distributed concurrency, are you taking care of the shared stuff? All right, number four, number five. All right, moving right along, just about halfway there. Number six is going to be how risky is the change? You definitely don't want to be the person who breaks the production, who breaks, you know, breaks down, brings down the whole website. But similarly, you don't also want to be the person that reviews the code that goes and breaks production. Both are bad. So if a change is very risky, you do have to take extra precaution because you don't want to be the person breaking stuff too often. So make sure there's defensive measures in place to handle the risk. Make sure if something's in the critical path, ask yourself, does it really need to be in the critical path? That's been me in the ass quite a number of times. And also monitoring and observability. So many programmers forget to do this. They just implement their features, push them up, but they don't even know how their feature is working. If somebody makes a change, you have to be able to monitor the change. It's just kind of common sense, but it goes past people sometimes. So how risky is the change? Don't let it be too risky. Seven, I'm not gonna to talk too much about this, but pretty much many times people try to do too many things in the same code review. If you're trying to do too many things, if you see somebody else doing that, just tell them to split it up, split up the concerns, single purpose code reviews get reviewed much faster, all right? It's just common sense. Eight is gonna be, does the code follow existing patterns? This is kind of, this can be a little troublesome when you have somebody kind of going against the rain, doing their own thing, kind of like disturbing the peace. You know, everything is nice in your coding ecosystem. You got the pattern set up and then someone comes in and they just do everything different. If you see this happen, and there's not a good reason for it, you gotta say something, all right? So if the code doesn't follow existing patterns, if someone's trying to disturb the piece, bring it up if it doesn't make sense. Number nine is, does the code actually introduce new stuff? So you can't always do the same thing over and over again. New stuff is not bad stuff. So as you make new features, new code is gonna come in that introduces new patterns. This is a good thing. Don't say, don't try to just be too old fashioned and just do everything and be set in your ways. Always be open to new things. 
And if somebody introduces something new, as long as it makes sense, it's good to go. All right, moving on, almost done. Number 10 is going to be, can any language feature be utilized better? Perhaps you just straight up know Python or you know Ruby much better than the author does and you know that they're using the language inefficiently at some point and just, you know, make, if that happens, it's easy. Make a comment saying, hey, there's a nice built-in language feature to make what you're doing, you know, 100% less lines of code. Wait, that doesn't make sense. 99% less lines of code. Number 11 is the exact same thing, but for frameworks. So you could be an expert at the language, but also if you're an expert at the framework and we all use frameworks and the person is not using the framework as best as they could be, just call it out. So if you're an expert in React or if you're an expert in Rails and you notice there's some kind of cool React thing that can make the this code review much simpler, just bring it up because this author might not know the framework as well as you. All right, so if you know the language or the framework better, or you know something about it can be used better, just bring it up. It's gonna be pretty easy. All right, this video is getting real long. Let's wrap it up. Last point, what I think is the most important part of code reviews is that, is the code readable? So we're all trying to write a lot of code, push out features, build things, but for any real, you know, real significant software system, the code is not just a matter of building the features. The code is really communicating how the system works to yourself and to your colleagues. So code at the end of the day is communication and communication is really important. If somebody, you know, just murmurs something to you where you can't hear, they just whisper something. If someone's not clear when they're talking to you, it's very annoying. So we all know how important communication is. So if you see anything that's not readable, if there's a one character variable name, or if you just see any readability issues, just call it up. All right, this is my last point. Is the code readable? You got to read it. Your coworkers got to read it. Just make sure it looks nice. All right, so those are my 12 points. If you're still listening, thank you for listening this much. This is, again, this is my checklist of the top 12 things you should watch out for when you're reviewing other people's code also super useful for writing your own code you know how they say if you read more you become a better writer it's the same thing with software if you review code more you're going to become a better coder so throughout your career please take this seriously you're going to be reviewing a lot of different code you're going to be in a lot of different code bases you have to actually get really good at just looking at some changes and really giving some good feedback on it. The people that can do that are actually really strong software developers and not many people can give very strong code reviews. So it's very important, don't take it lightly. Again, can't believe I'm asking this, but please follow me on Instagram, go to my website, bookmark this checklist. I think it'll be helpful as a reference in the future. Also on my website, there's gonna be a newsletter if I write any more blogs i'll probably make a video but also it'll go straight into your inbox because i have this cool newsletter thing so trying to up my social media game please follow me please leave a comment please like the video please make sure you subscribe to the notifications to get content i'm going to be making more stuff that's helpful for everyone please stay safe follow the rules i hope you're not sick catch everyone next time